Okay. okay. Great. I think we got everyone in. Welcome everyone to Medicine Buddha Practice. Um, if you're, um, well, anyone can say hello in the chat, but particularly if you're new, I would love to to um, hear from you. We just can kind of offer our names or whatever name you're using right now and whatever information you would like to share um, about where you're practicing from and so forth. That would be wonderful. And everyone else can say hello in the chat. I like to see all the folks from all over the place in the in the space. It makes me feel special. And it forms a sense of community and belonging. That's what I meant to say, actually. All right. And also how you're doing too. Like, you know, how how are you doing? Um, and also any questions before we begin, any questions that may relate to enhancing your practice. But in the meantime, I am Lamarada. I use he, him pronouns. I'm here on um, Creek, Muscogee, Cherokee land here in Atlanta. And it's uh, wonderful to be with you all. Um, I know some of you are joining me also from Chinrezi practice from yesterday. Uh, so in this practice, I will make a special effort to be using the right deity because it <laughs> I was in and out of raising in Medicine Buddha yesterday. So I'm going to clean that up tonight. <laughs> they all just kind of like mill together over time. There's some wonderful opportunities coming up in person events. Um, of course, yeah, uh, June 10th, June 10th, June 10th, June 10th, June 10th, I'll be up in Toronto. Um, so um, if you're in, in that vicinity in Toronto, I'll be doing a one day, I guess it's a one day retreat. I literally don't know. I just kind of show up. Um, in Chicago, I was under the impression that I was doing a one-day retreat as well. And they were like, it's only two hours. And I was like, I can phone it in. Two hours, that's a phoner. <laughs> so, I think any questions that come up, maybe I'll get to them at the end. Um, but you know, we're and we're in the space we're talking about healing. So Medicine Buddha uh, is a wisdom deity uh, that is associated with healing. Of course, I also interpret Medicine Buddha um, also as an activist, which is what really drew me to Medicine Buddha. Even though I also identify as a healer. And I think Medicine Buddha is a really powerful um, energy to work with, consciousness to work with as a healer. Um, I really found uh, Medicine Buddha's commitment to justice to be really evocative. Um, it makes me think that like we should do another like online one day retreat for Medicine Buddha. Cause I forget when we last did that. When was that? Was it last fall? I don't remember. Time to do another one. It yeah. was a time. We're, we're due. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think we're due for another one. And that way I know a lot of people have been enjoying the practice. Um, yeah, let's, I'll, I'll think about that. It'll be online um, as well. Um, and before I forget, I'll be doing a one-day meditation retreat here in Atlanta 
um, the end of June as well. And that's going to be really great for people just wanting meditation and not all of this like stuff that I'm doing right now, you know, all this like hocus pocus and we're going to be doing some energy and some talking about the matrix. We're just going to do some basic meditation practice because I am a meditation teacher, right? You know, I am trained in the basic technology of cultivating awareness of mind. Sometimes I forget that I have to remind myself that that's what I do. Actually, I'm a meditator. Um, but getting back to Medicine Buddha, right? Because healing, so much of healing is is political. Like healing is political. When we're when we're experiencing wholeness, when I talk about healing, I'm talking about wholeness. When we experience wholeness, then we have this capacity to transform the relative. Like we have this capacity to really bring about really balanced, equitable change in how we live together. You know, there are systems that are created to keep people unhealthy, which again, for me, means that there are systems that keep us fragmented, right? That keep us from experiencing wellness in terms of wholeness. And that will always disrupt our capacity to create just equitable communities because your energy is going into like trying to be well right and a system that's not allowing you to be well because you're not gaining access to the resources that you need to experience wellness or wholeness or in tantric sense right to experience to remember our wholeness our completeness right and all this is intentional, right? This, you know, there are systems intentionally created to perpetuate the illusion of fragmentation. So we don't remember our wholeness. And if we don't remember our wholeness, we don't, you know, we don't feel as if we have the capacity to ask for healing in the relationships that we're creating in community, you know, and culture and society and so forth. So this healing work that we're doing is political, you know. Um, I have a, a dear friend um, in, uh, in London, um, Parzana, and she runs the Global Health Initiative, who does this incredible work around like access to, to care, you know, around the world, not just in the UK, and we talk about this quite a bit, and she's like a deep healer as well, an activist. Um, and how so much activism and organizing has to also be about care and wellness. Like, how do we how do we help people, including ourselves, get access to the care that we need to experience wellness? wholeness, groundedness, right? And this is why Medicine Buddha, the practice of Medicine Buddha is so important um, right now. Um, the, the things that we're experiencing in terms of like just the violence, the local unrest, all the like silliness, you know, and the, the restrictions of freedoms and so forth, all that has a deeper root. And that deeper root is in our individual and collective suffering. You know, the ways in which we're trying to outrun our suffering and we create these political experiences to try to help us bypass the suffering, right? And we, as long as we keep doing that, the more we create more suffering, right? Medicine Buddha and also the path of Buddhism in general is actually inviting us to return back into these experiences of discomfort, of suffering, right? Our suffering, of course, comes from actually not remembering who we are, that we are actually awakened, liberated beings, but we've gotten distracted, you know? Um, we've gotten constructed, we, we've gotten distracted, um, by the constriction and the shutting down and movement 
And what we're having to do in terms of healing is to reinvest and come back to spaciousness, to fluidity, right? To emptiness itself, to really begin to remember that these experiences, these states are actually always present, right? And it doesn't matter if we remember or not, space doesn't go anywhere. Space just is. Emptiness just is, and permanence just is, right? And sometimes, you know, the practice is just training to just shift the thoughts. Like over time, you get to a place in the practice where you can just switch thoughts. Like you're, you're bound up, kind of being swallowed by the contraction, which is anxiety, fear, um, craving, whatever it may be. Like you're, you're, you're contracting. And sometimes the work is as simple as saying, oh, there's space. Why am I shutting down here? Like, what am I being, why am I being consumed by this experience, right? It's just a snap, like, and you're like, oh, there's space here, right? And space meaning there's potential, there, there are solutions, there, um, you know, there, there's, you know, there's movement, right? I think sometimes we look at the world and we think of the world as just this constricted, contracted experience, but when in fact, that's just one thing that's happening. And the other thing that's happening is that we're being held by incredible spaciousness and everything is an expression of emptiness itself, right? And when you're like talk, when you're like thinking about like space and emptiness and and moving from contraction to like openness i want you to to move with this right you know this is what a mudra is a, a mudra isn't some complicated ancient esoteric you know sleight of the hands <laughs> the a mudra is just the ways in which we invite the body into this awareness, you know, the, the hands or whatever we're forming the mudra with. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything else that's going to be a bad joke. But anyway, you're forming. <laughs> I love when I just have jokes that I only get because, again, it makes me feel special. Um, but the mudras, right? These mudras become the ways in which we choreograph different kinds of realizations, right? The body becomes a part, it's an asana. I think mudras are asanas as well, you know? So it's like that when the body becomes a part of how the mind is blossoming, in this kind of awareness of emptiness, then there's this kind of holistic um, kind of way that everything is invited, right? into this kind of liberation, right? Because in Tantra, we're trying to engage the body, the speech, uh, and the mind all together, you know? One of you is that we have to keep all these expressions busy you know, and kind of pointed and aligned towards awakening, which is, again, space and emptiness, energy, you know? So when we're moving, of course, this is, again, the heart, the foundation of asanas that we invite the body into this expression of awareness, this expression of realization, right? You know, again, moving from contraction to openness, you feel that energy, right? Some of you maybe, maybe you can try this in your space uh, right now. Like I see no one doing anything. So like, it's just like, 
right? It's like sometimes, literally, sometimes I'm like, oh, what does this feel like just to like really like, I don't know, all my hands, my fists and fingers, like feeling that contraction, right? And the pressure, you know, and the intensity and maybe the discomfort and the pain, this is how we're living our lives right here. And it's how many people are living. And what Dharma is trying to do is actually release that, right? And the breath joins in, like the breath becomes fluid and open and long, you know? Just like we do with yoga. Like for those of you who practice and study yoga, this is what we're doing in asana. Like everything's coming together. Right, the, the, the asana, the movement or the mudra, right, begins to, again, it begins to symbolize like what the real nature of phenomena is, it's movement, it's openness of space. You know, and this is like, this is my, often my mudra for space. I mean, you see me teaching and I started doing stuff like this. This is my mudra for space. This is everything. Like space is how I open. And what does that feel like just to open the space and to actually rest within the space that's opening? Right? Sometimes it's like an egg, right? It's like an egg that cracks open and it begins to spill this energy of complete like openness. Like it, everything becomes like a field that's where all the phenomena arising in this field is just being held, right? Right, and sometimes you can do this. This mudra is like coming into a prayer. Pranam, sometimes we call it, right? And filling the palms together and then releasing and then slowly opening the palms. And like, of course, this is opening space. It's like opening a door. Like, oh, there's space, right? Those are just like movement, fluidity, not even thinking about it. Right, and then you, when you're practicing this awareness, right, with the movement, with the mudra of asana, right, we just allow the mind to let go of its clinging to all these other forms of phenomena, to the thoughts and emotions and this and that, and just allow awareness to kind of gently hook itself in the movement. And then over time, it's like, what's really moving? It's like the matrix, right? 
just like the kids, the little monk with the spoon. And the kids like, is it the mind or the spoon that's moving? And we know it's the mind. <laughs> Actually, I'm moving. I ruined the coin for you, sorry. The spoon isn't moving. There's nothing inherently outside of mind that exists, right? Everything that happens, happens within mind. This is mind, right? Movement, fluidity, the mudras. And what are your mudras? Right, what was actually inviting you into this experience of space? Right, this kind of like, what's inviting you? What are your mudras? Right, and I do all of mine all the time. Right, space, right, our lotus mudra, right, when we start opening the consciousness, the energy, right? A medicine Buddha, the light, right? It's just the light of clarity, right? we open. Right? We rise like from, from the mud, right? To our awakening, the, the dense confusion, the suffering, the delusion, right? And this is where we all are. We're on the level of delusion and muddiness. But we have to actually start rising up, transcending, right? The delusion, the drama, the silliness, and start actually reaching for the clarity, right? For the, the light, the wisdom. Right? And whatever we need, like, there's always, I'm always talking about what do you need? We think about what we need, and then we do the gesture or the mudra of gathering what we need. Like, what do you need right now? So gather. Gather those resources into yourself. You know, you need more time, gather that resource of time. You need more care, gather the resource of care. You need more love, gather that love. Like when the world becomes so rigid, the antidote is movement and dance and acting up. Right, not just sitting still, but shaking, right? Shaking it out, twisting, like dancing with everything. You know, you have to like get the body moving. You know, like you're you're at the ball, right? You know, you know, like yes, you know. Just like make it hot, make it glamorous, but make it playful, you know, make it playful, right? And what do you have to give to the world? What is, what does giving to the world look like? What are you giving? What is rising from you that you're offering to the world? Not not the violence, not the, the silliness, but what good, sweet, pure stuff are you giving back to the world? What do you have to give? Right? Right. And noticing the the the, the subtle differences in gathering, right? And then offering, like, what does that feel like? 
And this is one of the most powerful gestures of, or mudras is this offering, right? Just this open palm, right? Right, and this is and this is how we should actually be seeing, right? The deities, like the deities, the wisdom deities, should be should be open palms, open palms. Right, as we study in Chinrezi, Chinrezi has all these open palms, thousand a thousand open palms. Right, and even though, yeah, some of these traditional you know, representations of Medicine Buddha. It's just Medicine Buddha holding the, the bowl and the plant, but actually the energy of those things that he's holding, which are medicines to cure anything, it is actually the energy of generosity, like taking. Right? And then you're noticing the energy beginning to, to shift around you. Like you can feel just the energy when you slightly bring your palms together. You feel something. You feel heat. Right? You feel static, maybe. Right? But there's, there's a, I wouldn't even say a suchness there. There's something, right? This energy. You know, that you're maybe beginning to feel this, this is the nature of all phenomena, this energy. That our minds are shaping into phenomena. Right? And this is what we're trying to come back to. Now, for those of you in Seven Homecomings, of course, this may very well be your lesson for tomorrow night. <laughs> But this energy, right? And you can separate your palms and still stay connected to that energy and begin to imagine that what I maybe slightly experience between my palms is actually radiating. It is actually like the quality of everything this energy that abides within space. And I think perhaps space is how we feel emptiness. I don't know what emptiness feels like, but I know what space feels like, boundlessness, openness. It's like looking up at a sky, you know, maybe a very clear sky and just letting the awareness of your mind just fall and crack open. And you're no longer actively trying to hold and notice everything and respond to everything. You're just allowing space itself to hold everything. And when space begins to hold things, there's a pressure that's lifted. There's a heaviness that dissipates, right? Because you're no longer trying to do work that you don't have to do because space is already doing that. I just have to tune into it. I have to allow space to do its work. And then I can reinvest my energy in responding to what needs to be responded to. Because space is also holding us, me, this one as well. And so when I talk about myself, I bring 
some type of contact to myself, usually my upper chest, in whatever way feels you know appropriate in the moment. But I want to feel a little bit of pressure, particularly around my heart chakra and heart center. And this, for me, in my practice, communicates a sense of groundedness, of stability. Again, I think I was saying this maybe yesterday, you know, when, when I'm driving with my mother or my mother's driving, she comes to a sharp stop. She reaches over and just put her, puts her palm on my chest. Maybe that's a reactive thing for parents, right? But when I do this, I feel the hand of not just my mother, but I feel the hand of the mother, of the cosmic universal mother, right? But this can also be the grounding of Medicine Buddha, this kind of healing gesture and mudra that says, I got you. I'm actually holding you right now. But that's always happening, right? And that's not just like a creative, innovative kind of thought, but like we're always being held by the Buddhas, right? And what we're trying to do in Buddhist Tantra is just remember that, not just remember, but first believe it. We're trying to believe that we're always being held, even when things are just like shit. Right, we're always being held. We're being held in the good times, we're being held in the bad times. Whatever you know, though that duality means for us. But this is a point where trust becomes something we have to start choosing. Like this trust that we're being held, this trust like that this energy that we're feeling, that this energy is also really conscious, that it's aware. And this fundamental consciousness isn't about harming, but it's about awakening, supporting, liberating. This energy is about helping us to remember that we too are just expressions of energy. Right? But what arises for some of us here is this wall of disbelief, this wall of pain, this comfort, suffering. And we say, well, this, this suffering, this trauma, or discomfort, like this, this can't be just energy. This can't be also an expression of emptiness and space. And that's where some of us get stuck. This is the snag. Of course, death is the ultimate snag for probably most of us. Not death. Death can't be this either. But death, be not proud. Well, some have called thee mighty and dreadful. Thou art not so. I was an English major, so it, I can't help it. Dylan Thomas. <laughs> One of my favorite poems, actually. But death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for you are not so. This thought that I'm having, though it is mighty and dreadful, it is not so, right?
every thing arises from the same essence. Everything arises from the same essence and everything will eventually return to that essence. Again, the wave, the ocean meditation that we do, which I've included in New Saints, you know, the waves of the mind, which the waves of thoughts and emotions arise from the ocean of the mind, and then they return back to the ocean of the mind. The wave is no other than the ocean. The ocean is no other than the wave. I mean, are you healed now? Because that's what I'm trying to do. Are you are you healed? <laughs> that to keep going. <laughs> we have to <laughs> we have to cut through the how we overcomplicate these practices. This is the point of everything that I'm doing in life, if you haven't gotten it. <laughs> It's too fucking complicated, right? It is, it is, it is right here. Liberation is right here. And I know you don't get it, right? That's why the Buddha came and did all the stuff. Not just the Buddha, many people, many, many realized beings from many different spiritual paths. This is just one path, you know? But you have to, sometimes you have to get busy and exhausted in the complexity of something. So you get too tired to keep creating things and you just fall out exhausted. And then that's when liberation happens. You just get so tired of creating all of this, buying into that, investing in that, getting anxious about this. And you just get to the point where you're just like, fuck it, right? And some of you are trying to, you're, what is it? You're trying to, you're reacting to everything and that's overwhelming, right? But you don't know how to let exhaustion take care of you, right? So exhaustion, we think it's this antagonistic experience. We're tired, we're depleted, but even exhaustion is trying to take us back into the essence, right? Everything is, this is Buddhist Tantra, all phenomena, all phenomena is actually trying to lead us back to the essence. Again, everything rises from the ocean of the mind, everything returns back to the ocean of the mind. However, we have to let it return. When the waves rise, you notice the waves and then you let those waves do what they need to, they crash back. If we stop trying to get so involved with everything, then the phenomenal world actually begins to reveal itself to you. It begins to reveal a sacred functioning, right? There's an order to this, even though we may interpret this as chaos. There's an order in this chaos, right? And the order simply is that everything is always trying to return home, right? But we don't believe it, nor do we allow it, right? Because the sense of self is so dependent on our orchestrating the phenomenal world in order to continue to, to, to in order to continue to facilitate the sense of separateness. Once you just start letting things be, the our fixation around the sense of self begins to broaden and begins to expand. And there's there's more fluidity, there's more openness, right? 
and you begin to dip in and out of the essence. When you dip into the essence, you begin to lose the sense of self, but it's not this dangerous thing. Right? You just get a little glimpse, a little taste. Like you dip your finger into the cake batter and you get a little taste. You're not, you're not falling into the bowl, but you're getting a little taste. You're like, oh, I like that. Right? These little tastes, right? Which is also traditional. Like this is part of the tradition. It's like the taste. Like you don't have to awaken in this life but what we are working towards, which would be great to experience, is getting a glimpse of what the essence really is. Because that glimpse is something we will never forget. Like you never forget who you really are, right? And then once we enter into the illusion of death, then we remember what the essence is and then we can choose the essence. We can choose to rest within this like crack that's beginning to open within the phenomenal world, within the illusion itself. The crack is like the light. It's how the light gets in, right? And you begin to follow that stream of light that's coming through the crack because you remember it, because you remember that light from when you were living and practicing and meditating you know, that night when Mama Ra was like, there's a crack in this. If you can get that taste, right? Now, it does always come back to me, doesn't it? Like, all you need, all you need is the taste. Like, you need to know what the absence of drama really is, right? Before you start renouncing drama. Right. It's hard to renounce the drama and all the stuff when you actually don't know what the alternative is. You know? This is all we're trying to do. Like Again, this is just another exercise to get us back into relationship with these fundamental teachings, emptiness, essence, fluidity, suchness, all of this. Right? This is the essence of Medicine Buddha here. Right. But yeah, I mean, let's, of course, move deeper, move deeper into this, right? So this energy that we may be feeling, may be connecting to, is the expression a medicine Buddha, right? So right now, as we deepen our practice, this is this is a space again, right, where we begin to open and beginning to touch into the essence of medicine Buddha. So I want to begin by just inviting you just to, again, shift your attention to your heart center. Right. And imagining that you're breathing in and out of the heart center. So you're just focusing the breath in and out of the heart center here. And as we're breathing, I want you or invite you to just begin to long for healing, like long desire, want healing. 
And nothing on this path happens without deep longing. Deep longing is such, as some of us know, a very powerful energy, right? That can get us into trouble, as we see, and we're, we get that. But longing, again, opens doors, it opens a portal, right? It begins to attract what we're longing for. Again, longing, right, can attract beneficial positive things. It can attract the opposite. Again, we see that. We know that. But here, we're longing to be healed, to be freed from suffering, to remember our innate wholeness. And you can, you can long for yourself, you can long for others. This longing for others, or this longing in general, is also the root of prayer. The longing for something different to happen, and how that longing is energy that begins to shape the phenomenal world. It begins to galvanize other energies towards us and to our energy fields. But to long And I want us to sit in this longing for just a little bit. And to feel the longing for healing. And that energy, that longing, you can imagine that that longing begins to awaken energy in the heart center, maybe as white light or whatever feels appropriate for you, or whatever naturally happens. But it begins to awaken energy, that longing. And there may be sadness there. Allow that to awaken, because we're going to call in the Medicine Buddha to hold this longing and help this longing be directed into change and transformation for ourselves and for others. But for right now, awakening the longing in the heart center, maybe seeing this awakening as energy that begins to radiate from the heart center throughout the body. So our bodies begin to be filled with this energy of longing. And still you're breathing in and out of the heart center. And when that longing maybe feels too intense or the energy in the heart center begins to feel too intense, releasing that energy in the out breath out of the heart center. So like a pressure valve situation, like you're releasing the pressure and the out breath. And this technique is working for a lot of you. So like when you find yourself really longing for something and you can't shift the energy, you can't transform it, then the out breath becomes how we becomes how we can release overwhelming energetic states. Energy, particularly prana, our life force energy, is always riding the breath. 
This is the basis for pranayama practice, for breath practice. When we work with the breath, we begin to, to move energy. Just a little bit longer. And we're going to shift a little bit. And the shift is actually beginning to shift into compassion. And in this moment, we're noticing, we're feeling the longing. And now we begin to think how all beings have to be free from the suffering of not getting what they need. The basic experience of songing that our longing is trying to move us through, right? To gather the resources so we begin to disrupt or to settle or heal the suffering itself. We begin to want this for all beings, that all beings may be freed from suffering. And our longing is directed into warning everyone, all beings, conscious beings, all energies, to be freed from the suffering. from any suffering, really. from this shift in, in, into compassion and all beings longing for all beings to be free from the suffering right to have what they're longing for to be fulfilled that this compassion begins to awaken the consciousness of Medicine Buddha right back in the heart center. And so you can imagine an image of Medicine Buddha awakening in the heart center or just feel the presence of Medicine Buddha. Or it can be none of that. You can just say, you know, Medicine Buddha's awakening in my heart center. But most importantly, just for us to just simply acknowledge whether we feel this or not, that Medicine Buddha is indeed awakening, forming within our heart center. That Medicine Buddha is with us because Medicine Buddha is always with us. 
because we share the same liberated mind as Medicine Buddha, all awakened Buddhas, and all sentient beings. You can always bring your palm back to your chest, to the heart center. Thinking, Medicine Buddha arises here. And then it becomes the consciousness of Medicine Buddha that begins to radiate through the body from the heart center. So this energy of longing is instantly transferred into the liberatory healing consciousness of Medicine Buddha. And as we allow that transformation to happen, we'll, we're going to chant the first introductory mantra three times. Omen Masange Kino Soha, Medicine Buddha, please know me, think of me, be here. Whatever you need from Medicine Buddha right now, Kino, which traditionally means to know in Tibetan, can be translated to correspond to what you need. From Medicine Buddha. So Medicine Buddha, heal me. Medicine Buddha, think of me. Medicine Buddha, just hold me. Whatever you need, just ask. We'll chat this three times. Again, Om Namah Sangeetina. So ha. we begin. Om Namah Sangeetina. So Om la sange no So Om la sange no so uh, and believing now that Medicine Buddha has awakened within your body, within your mind. and also within the space around you. And we'll shift to our mantra. We'll, again, as usual, shift into a first round of mantra practice, then we'll offer our prayer requests. We'll come back for a short round of mantras. And the mantra is in the chat box. They are down, big and say, big and say, ma, big and say, as a sumungate, so ha. And just sitting, allowing Medicine Buddha to be here. And if you feel moved to allowing there to be some movement, 
and your practice as well. Whatever feels natural. This is what we're going for, a natural arising of movement and asana, right? Letting the body join the movement, the flow, the awakening of energy through this profound practice of medicine Buddha. And so we begin.
attention to the prayer requests. And again, calling into the space, all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Yidams, Dharma protectors, all beings of light, all guardians of the lands that we're practicing on, our benevolent ancestors, our descendants, and all beings, both living and dead, to come into the space to support us as we offer these prayers. And we ask you to, to offer us 
support to bring about what we most are longing for. We're offering prayers for me as I continue to work with internalized racism and patriarchy and move towards loving and valuing myself. Offering prayers for me as I continue my one and a half year long journey toward healing my physical body from diabetes and cardiovascular disorders. We're offering prayers for Mary, Rami, Asha, Clem, and Leslie as they navigate to difficult times. Offering prayers for Brian and his mother as they care for their father, husband, and his cognitive struggles and for themselves and their relationships to him. We're offering prayers for my little family that they all receive what they need and that we are all held by love. Offering prayers for understanding, wisdom, clarity, and my life direction and daily choices. We're offering prayers for understanding and clarity in my relationships, guidance, and trust, reassurance on my path. Offering prayers for all those suffering from oppressive system. Offering prayers for all those orphaned or abandoned. Prayers of gratitude for my beloveds and benefactors. Offering prayers of peace and protection for Camilla and who I met on the hill yesterday. Offering prayers for trust, integrity, and interdependence and healing past hurts and overwhelm. Offering prayers for Susan and requesting complete healing of the thrum, um, thrum, um, thrombitis of her left arm. For offering prayers of gratitude for the new level of connection with my partner. Offering prayers to prayers um, Prayers to remain connected to care, wellness, and wholeness. Offering prayers that everyone in my family and among my beloved heals from transgenerational trauma. Offering prayers for my children, may they heal from recent emotional trauma. Offering prayers for an old health issue that has come back to resolve quickly. Offering prayers for Claudia Miguel Tavares and his family. Prayers for all those suffering from addiction and suicidal ideation. Offering prayers for Jay that he will feel safe to stop deception and defensiveness. Offering prayers of gratitude for these profound teachings that I might remember and integrate them in my daily life. Offering prayers for the child who bumped her head really bad today. Offering prayers for myself as I navigate a chronic pain, trauma flare up. May I remember the space and all the care that surrounds me. May I discern how to best care for myself. Offering prayers for regulation of my nervous system, prayers for our broken hearts, prayers for me recently diagnosed with Lyme and struggling with symptoms of it. Offering prayers for my daughter Anton's physical and emotional well-being as she navigates leaving what has become an abusive marriage. Prayers for me and as a mother, may I support her in ways that are meaningful and helpful. Offering prayers for me to be able to manage graduate school, work, and intense family situations. Offering prayers that may the power dynamic I feel at work that does not benefit the residents be met with realization of staff members. Ease and dissipate into space. May I feel the deep and lasting benefits of Medicine Buddha and of all of my practices. Offering prayers for reparation for Anthony, prayers for health and alleviation of suffering for Gabriel. Offering prayers for Kara and Siggy, prayers that I will get to know them, prayers for Ada and Orion, 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 and prayers for Steph, Ashley, and their children, prayers for Kaj and Susanna, prayers for Molly, who navigates a new pregnancy after multiple miscarriages. Praying for Hum, hum who has just passed, knows I hear him and see his beautiful smile when I need it the most, praying I never forget how close he is to me always. I know he does, praying I can remember, return to that as often as I need. Prayers for me as I near the anniversary of my mom's death and prayers for help and feeling and accepting my brother's estrangement from me. May he know my love, may I know my own love. Offering prayers for my friend who is near the end of her gorgeous year in life with ALS, teaching the Dharma the whole time. May she know the deepest peace and love. Prayers for Shava Bailey, Mahan Silla, Tom Phillips, Lisa Z, Shia Eisenberg. 
I'll prepare for myself, my knee, my neuropathy and stamina, concentration and joy for upcoming writing residency and the project I'm working on, which I hope will benefit all beings. But right now seems quite overwhelming for a sense of deep connection to ancestors and all beings. Prayers for Chris, who is back in the ICU, and for Eli, who is sitting in vigil there each night. Prayers for my healing from a heart scare that I may deepen my practice through this experience of fear of death. Praying for unblocking my ears and head so I may then be more of a blessing to all others. Prayers that I may be free and continue to move towards freedom. We continue to offer prayers for all beings. Um, for all beings impacted by systems and institutions of violence. We pray, we pray for the abolition of all suffering and all institutions that create suffering. I pray for the alleviation um, of all obstacles that keep us from gathering all the resources that we need to be well, happy, safe, and healed. That we all achieve awakening as quickly as possible. And now releasing these prayers into the, into the field of benefactors and into emptiness itself and into the consciousness of Medicine Buddha as well. Returning back to our mantra and just allowing ourselves to be cared for and trusting that our prayers are being cared for and tended to. Oh, baby. 
So returning your attention back to the heart center, again acknowledging Atmanas and Buddha in your heart center. Imagining that medicine Buddha begins to melt into the white light of your heart center, integrating into your mind and body remaining always inseparable in this life and all your lives to come. And returning attention back to the body in general, beginning to reawaken the body through some very simple, slow movements. Maybe adding a few deep cleansing breaths, breathing into the nose, out of the mouth, releasing any still energy out of the mouth to the exhale. <clears throat> Maybe doing a little shaking, a little bit more intensive movement if you need to shake a little more energy loose. For some of you, bringing some attention down to really the solar plexus, the third chakra around the navel area. Maybe doing a few deep inhales and exhalations in and out of the navel area just to release, to shake off some of energy that may feel too settled or too rigid. Now let's turn our attention to Shantideva's prayer as we begin to close out our session. And we'll recite this three times. May I be your protector to those without protection, a leader for those who journey, and a boat, a bridge, a passage for those desiring a further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. Just like space and the great elements such as earth, may I always support the life of all the boundless creatures, and until they pass away from pain, may I also be the source of life for all the realms of very beings that reach into the ends of space. May I be a protector to those without protection, a leader for those who journey, and a boat, a bridge, a passage for those desiring a further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. Just like space and the great elements such as the earth, I always support the life of all the boundless creatures, and until they pass away from pain, I also May also be the source of life 
for all the realms of varied beings that reach into the ends of space. And finally, may I be a protector to those without protection, a leader for those who journey, and a bolt, a bridge, a passage for those desiring the further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. And just like space and the great elements such as the earth, may I support the life of all the boundless creatures. And until they pass away from pain, may I also be the source of life for all the very beings that reach into the ends of space. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for your practice um, in this session. I hope it's been beneficial. Um, and, um, you know, if there's like one or two questions that I can take, we can do that. For those of you who have to sign off, we'll always have the recording that you can take a look at later on. Um, Any There's questions question earlier from um, from oh. Ian Tennessee about Reiki and Medicine Buddha? Is yeah. the energy the same? Yes, it's the same. Of course, Reiki is rumored to to be a Tibetan lineage, a lost Tibetan lineage. But there are many many lineages that have been lost that are rediscovered in different cultural contexts as well. Um, so yes, it's the same energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's um, nothing else. If folks want to raise their hands, then uh, Karen will be able to unmute you. All right, Eli? Eli, where are you? Here you are. Uh, are we, how many, is there a specific number of times we chant the mantra? Is it like 108 or something, or is it just a vibe? I don't, yeah, I don't believe in numbers. Cool. Um, so it's, it's a vibe. Nice. I, I love vibes. So I was like, this feels like a vibe and I just want to settle into it. So I don't start counting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't count. I'm not a counter. Yeah. It's like vibe. It's my uh, like Achilles heel being raised. Then I am always trying to stop counting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're just losing ourselves in practice. Just lose yourself in practice. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, thank you all so much for your practice. I'll um, um, see some of you tomorrow night, which is Seven Homecomings practice, and. Um, I think that's it. And of course, check out our websites, but we sparse share my personal website as well for events coming up um, as well. So there are always new events coming, being posted, um, particularly for this year. There are just, there are things that just don't get, um, the details don't come in until like a couple of weeks before the event, but like they're in, they're floating you know, in the space, but they'll land. So I will probably be back in Chicago sooner than later. So watch out for that in Toronto coming up. Um, and I'll be in Western Massachusetts most of August as well. So check out those events as well. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone. And I'll see you later. All right. Be well.